All right, let's go through each of these questions and I'll do my best to explain them fully. So this one is asking us, what's the limit of this function as x gets close to zero from the left? All right, so from the left of zero, uh, zero is a, a special number. When you come from the left of it, they're negative numbers. And if you come to the right, they're positive. Okay, so we're going to be plugging in small negative numbers. So what happens when I take a small negative number and raise it to the seventh power? That is going to be a small negative number. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make this pen a little thinner. Okay, what happens when I put a small negative number in for this x right here? Um, well, I'm going to take 1 divided by a tiny number. Take one divided by a tiny number, you get a large a, num a number that's large in magnitude. You know, very, very far away from zero. And it will be to the left of zero, it will be negative. So this will be a large negative number. Of course, saying a large negative number is kind of a funny thing because negative numbers, the further to the left you get on the number line, technically the smaller the number is. But uh, we made a number that's large in magnitude and is to the left of zero. Uh, so it's getting increasingly and increasingly farther and farther and farther to the left of zero, meaning more and more negative, meaning we're going and going and going towards negative infinity. Uh, this is if the limit doesn't exist at state y, the limit doesn't exist, and it's because the limit is negative infinity. So this is fine, or it doesn't exist because it goes to negative infinity. Um, but to say this, is plenty. All right. So next, find the limit. Uh, if you know, so find the limit. So we're going to infinity, positive infinity. Um, the short answer is both of these degrees are one. These are both of degree one, and when we have the same degree, we approach just the ratio of the leading coefficients, negative one half. And the explanation for that is, uh, you know, just try it a few times. Try it with any uh, rational function that has the two polynomials of equal degree. Uh, put in 800 million, 800 million, and you're going to get negative 3 times 800 million. And, and so you're going to have this so negative, well, we're going to be into the... What is it? The, the, the trillions, no, the billions. We're going to be into the billions. Uh, we're going to be 2 billion, 4 million. Okay, that's a negative 2 billion, 4 million. That's huge. And then what are we going to do? We're going to subtract 5. That's ridiculous to subtract 5 at that point. You know, uh, you're. you're Two point four billion dollars in debt, and then uh, the guy, this guy walks up to you and is like, "Hey, remember when I loaned you that five dollars for a sandwich? Yeah, you owe me that five dollars." You're like, "Whatever, hey, sure, I owe you five dollars." So it just doesn't make much of a difference. My point is that this becomes more and more insignificant as this becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. So we could kind of like just ignore that, almost ignore that, and then we get six times eight hundred million. All right, so in the in the denominator here, we're we're looking good. We've got uh, what four point eight billion dollars, uh, four point eight billion dollars, and some guy comes along and says, "Here's four more dollars," and you're like, "Well, sure, I'll take your four dollars," but uh, you know, what what difference could that really make? Four dollars. I I could have afforded anything I wanted, and you came along and gave me four dollars, and then so this becomes less and less important as these numbers become bigger and bigger and bigger. So as we kind of imagine that these numbers are not there anymore, these guys always will essentially cancel each other out. And we just, we're not there, but we approach this ratio of negative 3 over 6. Okay, And it would be exactly negative 3 over 6 if it weren't for this minus 5 and plus 4. They are the ones that are making it not exactly equal to negative 1 half, uh, but it it's getting really close. It's as close as you want to get without ever actually getting there. All right. Uh, so next, uh, find the limit of this guy here. 
the reason um, we can't evaluate other limits uh, like this first one um, is because we can't plug 0 into here or we divide by 0. That's the problem. That's why we don't just plug things straight in is because we'll get 0 in the denominator. But here, if I go ahead and plug in pi over 3, sine is defined for pi over 3. And the sine of pi over 3, as we discussed in class, uh, how to remember that using your left hand, um, that is going to be root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2. So you just plug it in, and that is it, right? If if the, if the sine of x is worth pi, root three over two at pi or yeah at pi over three, then it's going to be approaching root three over two from the left and from the right. Um, and in fact, it looks something like this. If we were to look at the graph, uh, the sine goes like this, and it comes back down, and then it just keeps going. Obviously, uh, here is pi over no, here is uh, yeah here is pi over two. Pi over 3 is right about there. And so right there would be root 3 over 2. And remember that the limit is defined as what, what value am I getting close to as I approach from the left? Well, from the left, the closer I get to pi over 3, the closer y is going to be to root 3 over 2. And then from the right, the closer from the right I get to pi over 3, the closer the y value is to root 3 over 2. So. That's the limit. You can just plug it in. No tricks, no games. You just plug it in. <clears throat> so let's see. Find the limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over x minus 2. And here we have a nice little graph. So as we approach 2, let's see from the left, we are approaching. It just keeps going down to negative infinity. And that's OK. Sometimes our limit is negative infinity. But look what happens on the right. We go up this way. We go to positive infinity. So it doesn't exist. The reason would be is that it's not approaching the same value from the left and the right. This would be fine if I said right about that. Uh, and the truth is, it's not approaching any value, it's not approaching anything. The, the bigger it gets, the bigger it can get. Uh, so it's not approaching any value. It's not that they're approaching different values. They're just not approaching the same value. Uh, but that's all. Maybe picky. Maybe that's a picky thing to say. Uh, so we're going to complete this table. And so I grab the old calculator, make this easy on myself, and I turn it on. It's going to work really well. Clear this out, put parentheses plus 4 divided by x squared minus 3x minus 28. OK, let me go to the table. If you're not able to plug values into your calculator really quick, just go second up to the window button. That's table setup. And make sure this guy is uh, selected on ask. This is selected here. So going back over to the table, now I'm going to put in all these values, negative. 4.1, negative 4.01, negative 4.0001. Okay, this is these are values that are just to the left of negative four, uh, getting closer and closer. And this shouldn't be zero zero zero. This should just be zero zero one. And there's the values, and I'm going to make you watch me write them in. And then we put a negative 3.99999 and 9. Uh, and that's it. And, and you can see, I'll just put a negative 3.999 here. You can see it's getting close, not to 0. I mean, it is small, but it's getting close to negative 0 0.0909. OK, negative 0 0.0909. I would make a guess that it's approaching 0 0.09 repeating forever. Okay, because that's something I know about fractions, and this it seems like it's going to turn into some kind of a one over or something. Uh, some fractions uh, can just be repeating decimals forever and ever and ever. Um, so there you go. Some some of the problems were that uh, you just said it was approaching zero, and that kind of makes sense because it's getting so small. But 
small numbers aren't you know automatically zero. Um, if it were getting close to zero, we were getting it to, to negative point zero zero one. That's really close to negative four. Um, so if it were getting close to zero, we'd be seeing things like point zero 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 one, not point zero nine. That's that's pretty big for the uh, hundreds place. And we keep seeing point zero nine over and over and over here and here and here. It's not going away. It's not approaching some other value. It is getting, you know, really really honed in on. 0 0.09. If you ever want to see a more accurate picture, you can just put your cursor over that and it'll give you all the decimal places. So 090917, 090900, it's just getting closer to 0909 or 0909090909. So um, we could even put in negative 4.0000. You don't want to go too far. But there we go, lots of zero nines. There's, it looks like this is going to be another nine the closer we get to negative four. So anyway, um, if we were to do this uh, without a table, you know, analytically, we would do the x plus four. We would do uh, factoring down here. I bet you there's an x plus four in there because, uh, of course, there would have to be. That's the only reason this thing doesn't go to infinity is because this x plus four is canceling this other x plus four. Anyway, we got x minus seven. Yeah, that works out. And if I were to put negative 4 in there, I would get, well, if I was looking at the limit as x approaches negative 4, I'd get 1 over negative 11. Okay, so not 0, but negative 1 over 11. Let's see, next page. Um, okay, what's the limit of this guy? I think it's pretty clear that it's 3. I don't think anybody got that wrong. Not really any reason to hang out and whatever, keep talking about that. So uh, we talked about this guy in class. It's kind of a problem. It's a piecewise function. It's broken up. Uh, there's some function that is to be used for x's that are less than or equal to negative 9. So I'll just kind of put a little marker right there at negative 9 so that I know something's going on there. Uh, between negative 9 and 7, another function is going to be used. So this will be a little closer to 0. That's 7. Uh, and then some function will be used for the x values that are bigger than 7, right? So for x's that are bigger than 7, in this direction, I'll use the function, let's say y, but I guess it's f of x. f of x equals negative 8. And to the left of negative 9, I'll use f of x equals 8. And in between here, from here to there, I will use... Uh, f of x equals ax plus b, some line with a slope of a and a y-intercept of b. Okay, so this guy is, I put a closed circle because it, it, it does include 9 and then negative 8 here, like that. So what we have is a, a request for an a and a b such that this will be a continuous on the entire real line. So my line needs to not be up here or here or way down here or there. It needs to go right there and from there all the way down to here. That was a pretty good line. It needs to touch this guy. Uh, the limit needs to exist. So that, that, that's a, a definition of, of continuity, that the limit exists at every point. Right? That's a good definition of continuity. Uh, that the limit exists at every point, and not only that, but uh, if we're at C, the limit exists at C. But remember, limits, limits can exist with holes. So the, kind of the other part of the definition is there can't be any holes. So the limit exists to C, and if, if the limit as x approaches C of f of x equals L, then f of C equals L, right? That's the definition of continuity. So not only does it approach that, that value, but if we were to plug that value in, it would uh, equal L. Anyway, the limit exists everywhere. It's continuous. Now we just need to figure out what A and B are, right? Uh, well, we've got two points, uh, negative 9, 8, and 7, negative 8. We can figure, figure out the slope here. we got 16 uh, over 16. So I guess uh, one of these needs to be negative. So call it negative 1. So x is, or uh, a is negative 1. All right, and we have a point, and we can solve for b with the slope and a point. So how about 8 equals negative 1 times uh, negative 9 plus b, 8 
equals yeah, 8 equals uh, 9 plus b so b equals negative 1 so a equals negative 1 b equals negative 1 there we go let's see final limit uh -huh. so it's going to go to infinity What's going to happen to this guy as I plug in infinity for x? Well, nothing's going to happen to it. It will just be negative 8 because x does not affect this term. Let me move on to the next term. What is going to happen to this term as x goes to infinity? Well, this will go to infinity, and then we're going to square infinity, so it's going to be infinity squared. That's going to be pretty big. So 3 divided by insanely big is going to be insanely small. It's going to be really, really close to 0. So I'm going to take this thing that's really close to 0, and I'm going to add it to negative 8. And negative 8 isn't even going to feel it. Feel it. It's not even going to feel like there was a breeze coming by when negative 8 has this insanely small number added to it. So negative 8 doesn't even notice, and it just keeps on being negative 8, and so the limit is negative 8. It just keeps getting closer and closer and closer to negative 8 as this gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Next, um, what is this guy approaching? Well, uh, Ruin the surprise, I guess. This is x cubed. This is uh, 3 cubed, so this is a difference of cubes. Uh, if you look at the difference of cubes at the uh, top of the, the test, it will tell us that x cubed minus 3 cubed factors as... Here's the thing that's really easy to remember. I, I know that if I have a cubed uh, plus or minus b cubed, I know it always breaks down like this, a, b, a squared, a, b, b squared. Real simple. All right? Once I can see that, it's, it's really easy. Now it's just really a matter of where does the positive or negative go. There's always one negative. Okay? If it's a difference of cubes, I, I think I keep saying squares. If it's a difference of cubes, then the, the, the minus goes right there. I don't know, that, for me, that's kind of easy to remember. Then everything else is a plus. And if it's a sum of cubes, this is a difference of cubes. If it's a sum of cubes, then the plus goes here, and the minus goes right here. It's just a matter of where does that where does that minus sign go? For me, it is. That's how I remember it. But a b a squared a b b squared. That's easy to remember, uh, right? Just flows right off the right off the tongue. Uh, so this is going to be x minus 3x squared plus 3x plus 9 over x minus 3. These cancel. What's the new function? Well, it's 1 times x squared plus 3x plus 9 over 1. So it's just x squared plus 3x plus 9. What is this function approaching? Well, it only has a problem at 3 because we get a 0 in the denominator, but we also get a 0 in the numerator. Remember how we talked about how these factors are canceling, 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 canceling. They're just canceling for an just unbelievable number of x's, the only place where these don't just completely cancel each other out is when x is 3, right? So uh, I, I had some kind of analogy, but it's, it's so convoluted. So whatever, whatever value you plug in for x, forget about what you get here for a second. Right here, if you put in 5, you're going to get 5 minus 3 is 2, 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 divides 2. And it's canceled out. You put in 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. 7 minus 3 is 4. 4 cancels 4. And you don't ever, ever notice these guys until you plug in 3. You wouldn't ever notice these guys doing anything until you plug in 3. So what is it doing all the other times? It's just doing this. It's just doing what this function does, exactly what this function does, until we get to 3. And the only thing that it does there is causes a glitch and a hole in the graph. So what is the limit? It is just whatever this function is worth at 3. So 3 squared, that's 9. 3 times 3, that's 9. 9 is 9, so that's 27. Right. And that is, uh, that's it for that page. And here we go. Uh, we're going to find this limit. Remember, the, the definition is what does the y value get close to, not what is the function worth. The function is worth 0, but the limit is 2. It's getting closer and closer to 2. So, 2. Okay. This guy, our final limit. Uh, as x approaches 6 from the right. Okay, hard to see on this. Ooh, well, that's fun. Um, I don't know if it's showing up on the video, but it's really being weird. Okay. 
Um, so what is the, the limit as x approaches 6 from the right? Well, here I'm going to put in a number that's slightly bigger than 6. What am I going to get when I take a number that's slightly bigger than 6 and subtract 9? I'm going to get something around negative 3, negative 3-ish. Right? That'd be the same if I approached 6 from the left, as far as minus 9 is concerned. right? You take a number that's slightly to the left, 5.9999999, minus 9 is going to be about negative 3 still. But down here, if I put a number that's slightly bigger than 6, then when I subtract 6, then I get this tiny, tiny, tiny positive number. Tiny positive number. As opposed to if I came from the left, from you know 5.9 to 5.999 and all that, then I would subtract 6 and get this tiny negative number. But in this case, I get a tiny positive number. So I get negative 3, you know, it's really just a negative number is all that's going to matter to this limit. Uh, negative 3 divided by this tiny positive number is going to be this huge number, but in the negative direction. So we're going farther and farther to the left. We're going to negative infinity. And that's it for that guy. So we're going to find the limit of this one as x approaches infinity. Okay, so... Uh, we uh, see my discussion earlier about um, the rational function that had the same degree. Now this has different degrees. So how is it going to compare? You know, when I put in 800 million plus 7, it's not going to make that, make that, that big a difference. And minus 5 is not going to be that big a difference. So it's going to be essentially negative 5x over 8x squared as x gets to be insanely, insanely large. And it'll be like, it'll have this tiny little bit added onto it, and this has this tiny little bit subtracted from it, but it's really the same value as negative 5x. When you add 7 to it, it's not going to change the value of this all that much. Uh, and the same down here, this is going to be the main thing. So what's going to happen when we put infinity in here? Well, if we look at it this way, we can kind of just think, uh, well, like this x will cancel this x, so I'll have like almost negative 5 over 8x. What's going to happen is it's just going to get insanely large. This whole thing is going to get insanely small, right? So it's going to go towards 0. The limit is 0. How about this guy? Uh, we're going to find vertical asymptotes. OK, so vertical asymptotes, what happen when you have a 0 in the denominator and not in the numerator? So we'll factor these. checks out. So this guy here, right, this guy that we kind of can cancel out, not really, we can't actually cancel it out, but we can imagine that it does. Uh, they cancel each other out except for when x is 6, and what do we get when x is 6? We get a hole. So that's not a vertical asymptote. Where's the vertical asymptote? It's at 8, x equals 8. That's going to cause a problem, and it's going to cause a problem that can't be managed by some factor in the numerator. This problem of 0 is, is kind of managed for other all other values of x, but this one uh, is not the, the closer that this gets to 8, the closer this gets to 0, and boom, we're off to infinity or negative infinity. So x equals 8 is our vertical asymptote. All right, so for number part 1, I guess we're approaching 4 from the right. So here's 4, we're approaching from the right. So we're coming down this graph and getting closer in the y direction to 0. From the left, we're coming from the left. We're getting closer and closer to 2. Okay, And the limit, as x approaches negative 4, just the limit, the limit, well, it's not approaching the same value from the right and the left, so it just doesn't exist. They don't have to explain why. Uh, continuity, it's continuous here, right, and here. There's no holes, no vertical asymptotes. It's here, 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 over here as well. It's continuous. Everywhere, everywhere, uh, except x equals negative 4. Or we could say discontinuous at x equals negative 4. Right. So uh, it, would, it wouldn't really work to say it, it, that it is discontinuous. That'd be, that would be saying that it is just a discontinuous function. Like it, it's just always discontinuous. It's just bad news all the time. Well, no function can be discontinuous everywhere. Um, 
unless it's just a discrete function, meaning just like a collection of points. I guess a, a scatter plot could be uh, discontinuous everywhere. But if there is any smallest little piece of a curve or a line segment, there is a place where it is continuous. We're from the right and from the left, we're approaching the same value. So it's just discontinuous at negative 4. At negative 4.0000000001, it's continuous. And at negative 3.999, it's continuous. Uh, it's just as continuous at negative 4. Okay, find all the x values. Which function is not continuous? Which of the discontinuities is removable? Okay, if we want to find discontinuity, we need to find places where the function has problems. Uh, could that be the square root of a negative? Sure, that could, or that could that be the logarithm of a negative or zero? Yeah, we could do that. Uh, you know, that all, all different problems can happen in this kind of a function. Problems happen when we have a zero in the denominator, of course. So we got x minus two. I'll bet you we have an x minus two factor down here. Um, and x minus 6, I'm guessing, yeah, that all works out. So these guys cancel out. What do we have there? We have discontinuity. Okay, so x equals 2, discontinuity. This guy right here, also discontinuity. What kind of discontinuity do we have here? Uh, well, we get, that, uh, we get that vertical asymptote, right? Uh, what do we get here? We get that hole. We get a hole at 2. So which one of these is removable? Removable discontinuity is just another, another name for a hole. So at x equals 2, it's removable. Okay, some of you had uh, just this maybe, or, or just, I think you, mo most people have had a mistake with x equals 6 and x equals 2. It's discontinuous at x equals 2 as well. Um, it breaks up, it jumps a gap, it is not continuous at 2. So it's discontinuous at both of these values, but the discontinuity is removable at x equals 2. All right, I think it seems like that's going to do it. All right, unless strangely there's something, no, there's nothing left. All right, so there it all is. I hope that was a good in-depth explanation of each problem. If not, then let me know. I would be glad to answer any of your questions. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.